In today's video, we're going to look at inputting your payroll information into Xero when you don't use Xero Payroll. Now we know that Xero has a payroll module. It's an add-on that you pay separately for, but not everybody that runs a payroll and uses Xero will use Xero Payroll. Maybe you've got a payroll bureau looking after your payroll, or maybe you've used different payroll software before and you're quite happy to stick with it. And that's okay, but what you need to do is you need to get your payroll information into Xero on a regular basis. If you have a monthly payroll, you want to input that information every month into your Xero account. One of the first things that you're going to need is a report from the payroll software that you use. Now, depending on the software that you use, the reports available will be different. But as long as you can find the information that we're going to talk about, it doesn't really matter what the report is called or what it looks like, as long as you know where to go to get the relevant information. So the first thing you want to do is gather together all the information you can find from your payroll software. Become familiar with the reports available and the information that they show. Depending on the software you use, the reports will look different. Here's a couple of examples of what your reports might look like. The next thing you want to do is enter what we call a manual journal in Xero. Let's head into Xero and we'll take a look at how to do that. You do need to be an advisor to input a manual journal, but just let's go and look at how to do it. We go to accounting, and if we scroll down to the bottom, we have manual journals. If it didn't appear there, you would go to advanced, and then on the left, you find manual journals. Okay, so we choose new journal, and we need a description. Monthly payroll is fine. You can put the month, but if you just say monthly payroll, you can use the same template every month. So we're going to choose the last day of the month as the date, and then we're just going to scroll down and we're going to start entering it. So we've been given the information. So it's for admin staff. So I'm going to look for a salary code, 477. I'm happy with that. And it's a cost to the business, it's a debit amount, and we've been told that it's 2,000. We're going to leave the same description, then we've been given the PAYE deduction, so that's the amount that you have to pay over to HMRC. If you weren't sure what that code was called, you could just click on the drop down arrow and go searching for it. Now I know it's a liability code and I've got enough knowledge that I know it's going to be under liabilities and it's also going to be 800. Here we have PAYE. Now sometimes I will use one code. I'll use one code for PAYE and national insurance. Depending on how your zero is set up, you might have two. So it's a PYE figure we've been given, so that's the code 825 that we're going to choose. Now Xero wants to balance your journal, so it's put a figure in there for you, and we just need to change it. So it's 250. Then we're looking for the national insurance. Now I actually remember it was the next code, so I'm just going to key in 826. Again, Xero wants to balance, it's just being too smart. So it's the liability for national insurance, that's 350. The next amount we've been told there's a student loan deduction. I'm just going to start looking for the word student. There we have it, code 947, and the amount is 50 pounds. On to the next line, and now we've been given what the net wages are. So again, if you weren't sure what the code was, you could just click on the drop down arrow, or if you think it starts with wages, wages payable 814. The amount is 1550. And then the final line we have is a cost code and it's employer's national insurance. So if I start keying national and I know that that's an expense code because it's a 400. And this time, Xero's put the figure in that we want to balance our journal. So we can see that our debits and our credits agree and we just want to double check. So we've got two amounts that go to the profit and loss account to expense codes. We've got the salary cost of 2000 and on top of that, we have employer's national insurance at 200. So we're happy with those codes. Then on the other side, the credits are the liabilities that we're going to have to pay. So we have 250 as PYE liability, 350 as national insurance, 50 as a student loan liability to pay over, 
And the final liability that we'll have to pay to our employees is the net wages of 1550. It's dated the 31st of January, which is the correct date for us, so we're happy with that. All that we do is go to the green post. If we had any backup, we could attach it. So if we had a report from our payroll system, which is clearly not zero, we could attach it here as backup. Happy with our transaction, and we just select post. And that's it. If you like the video, please let me know that you like it. Why don't you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and get notified when new videos are uploaded on a regular basis. Any questions, any comments, please put them below. I'll always do my best to respond. But until next time, happy zeroing. <laughs>